good evening everybody in the third month of pregnancy but as soon as it is completed between 11 weeks and 3 days and 13 weeks and 6 days it's a very important time where we ask for investigations of the mother uterine examination blood test some genetic markers and a detailed ultrasound when we ask for so many people are very concerned why do we need so many investigations and what is the importance of this 12 weeks tests i'm dr padmaja i have over 25 years of experience in this field of giving good pregnancy care and i am at padmaja clinic vijayawada and we are making this video to tell you about the importance of the landmark of 12 weeks pregnancy the tests involved and the details of the ultrasound initially when a baby is formed it is just a mass of cells slowly the various cells differentiate to form different organs and by 12 weeks the baby is almost fully formed and it is a miniature adult it's like a tiny bonsai so at this time we would like to know what are the specific requirements of this baby how is it developing and what else do we need to take care in the mother so that there is optimal development of this baby and it can grow to its full growth potential in a perfect environment so the first test we ask for if the woman does not know her blood group and rh that is the test we want it done if the woman is rh positive there is no issue if she is rh negative we would like to know the partner's blood group because if the partner is rh positive the baby can also be rh positive and at the time of delivery the baby's blood group needs to be done as soon as it is born and we need to immunize the mother if the baby is rh positive in some pregnancies when this rh mismatch is there between the husband and the wife antenatal injection antd is also given in the seventh month of pregnancy because that is the time when there is maximum stretching of the uterus and some amount of uh, leakage of the blood from the baby into the mother is possible and we do not want the mother to be sensitized about it the next test we ask is a blood picture where we check the hemoglobin the packed cell volume the total count of the wbc the differential count how these which are the cells in the wbc that are there the platelet count the bleeding time the clotting time and a peripheral smear examination this gives us lot of information regarding the mother's status of iron stores and anemia 80% of pregnant women in india are anemic if they do not have enough hemoglobin to take care of their own needs they will not be able to give enough iron stores for the development of the baby's hemoglobin and the bone marrow stores of the baby and iron forms a very important micronutrient in a lot of enzymes so the immunity of the mother and the baby will also be less and if we diagnose this at the third month we have enough time to make sure that the mother and the baby will be not having an iron deficiency by various means of supplement dietary advice the next test we ask is a glucose challenge test in which we ask the woman irrespective of her meals to take 75 grams glucose mix it in a glass of water drink it over 5 minutes and give the blood for glucose after 2 hours all the hormones that the placenta secretes in the mother to make her body adjust to this pregnancy increase the blood glucose levels 
and this is necessary because glucose is transferred across the placenta to the baby and it is the major energy uh, requirement for the baby so the mother also needs to increase her insulin levels so that her blood sugar doesn't go out of control whenever the blood sugar is very high it causes maternal damage and it also causes fetal damage and we call this gestational diabetes india being one of the most prevalent areas with diabetes we need to be very sure that the mothers don't have gestational diabetes so that the programming of the fetus inside the uterus is also perfect and the baby does not get a diabetic program the next test we need is a serum creatinine test in which it gives us an idea about the kidney function of the mother quite a large number of times pregnancy is the first time a lady is having all these blood tests done and we do pick up abnormalities in young women also the next examination is a urine examination where we check for any signs of infection and if the woman is losing any proteins in her urine or there is an extra sugar coming out inside her urine examination then we do common screening for infections like hiv hepatitis b hepatitis c and vdrl because all these infections cross the placenta and have an impact on the growing baby and we need to know that the next test we ask for is a thyroid function test unlike in non pregnant people in pregnancy we need to do a free t3 free t4 and a tsh the developing baby till it makes its own thyroid hormone is dependent on the mother's thyroid hormones that come across the placenta and since the baby's brain is developing so fast and the number of connections between the brain cells that is developing and is dependent on the thyroid hormone that is coming into the fetus these period are very important that the baby gets adequate thyroid hormone otherwise there are some studies that show hypothyroidism in the mother that means the mother not having enough thyroid hormone leads to lesser iq of the baby the next test we ask for is a rubella immunity status rubella is a viral infection if a woman is not immune and she contacts rubella infection this has serious implications for the baby because it affects the baby's brain the heart the eyes and there can be congenital blindness there is no cure and treatment for these so it is very important for us to know the mother's rubella immunity status in an ideal situation before she becomes pregnant itself rubella immune status needs to be known if we don't know it before at least now is not too late to know about it the other important test that we do now is called a double marker where we check proteins that are there in the mother's blood that come from the placenta and the baby and are that are specific for this pregnancy based on the levels of these proteins it gives us a statistical risk whether this baby is at a high risk of having congenital anomalies and chromosomal anomalies the most common one being down syndrome in case the risk comes low there is nothing to worry if the risk comes high it only means that there is a higher risk compared to others but it does not mean that the baby has an abnormality we need to do more specific test like an amniocentesis where with a thin needle water around the baby is taken and sent for genetic uh, chromosomal analysis which will definitely tell us if the baby has down syndrome or not and this is the period of time where we do a detailed ultrasound 
as i was telling you previously almost all the organs in the baby are formed so we look at the uterus we look at the length of the cervix which is holding and supporting this pregnancy and has to do that all through the 9 months we look at the ovaries we look for any cysts if there was previously any medical condition or gynecological condition we look whether that is having an impact on this pregnancy we look at the water around the baby we look at the site of the placenta we look at the baby in detail we look at all the organs we look at the heartbeat we look at the movement and in in this specific scan we look for two specific markers called the nuchal translucency and the nasal bone nuchal translucency is the thickness of skin near the neck and nasal bone is the tiny bone that is present here Pre if we can see the nasal bone and the nuchal translucency is within normal limits it means the risk of down syndrome is very very less if they are higher and we can't see the nasal bone we need to do further testing i hope this information was useful for you if you have any doubts please put them in the comment box we will get back to you and wishing you a safe and happy journey of pregnancy and a healthy baby this is dr padmaja signing off thank you